All right, so we want to prove this exercise. And fun fact, if you actually read through Folland, this is essentially, Fubi you can do this using Fubini Tonelli because you can view the sequence as G of GMs as a function defined on R cross the integers greater than or equal to zero. And then these sums from zero to infinity become integrals over the integers with respect to the counting measure. And then this just becomes a matter of um, interchanging the integrands of two um, of a um, of a function of two variables. But that's not really necessary because this is actually a pretty straightforward proof. It's basically just monotone convergence because all the GMs are positive. So I'm going to let fn be the sum from m equals 0 to n of gm. Then certainly fn is going to be less than or equal to fn plus 1 because it's just fn plus 1 is just fn plus gn plus 1 and gn plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, so you're only increasing it. Now if we let f be the sum from m equals 0 to infinity of gm, which is also the limit as n goes to infinity of fn. No, that's exactly what we're saying. So then fn converges to g. No, f. Right, because the sum from 0 to infinity is just the limit of the partial sums, which is precisely the limit of the fn's. So, by monotone convergence, um, the integral of the fn's increase to the integral of f. If we write out what this actually means, means that the integral of the sum, fn, remember this is a sum from m equals zero, wait. So here we're writing the integral of f d mu, which is precisely the integral of the sum from m equals zero to infinity of g m d mu. So this is equal to the integral of f d mu, which is the limit as n goes to infinity the integral of fn d mu, but this is the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral of the sum from m equals 0 to n of g m d mu. And so then Wait, do we even need this? Yeah, because it's not entirely clear that you can bring limits outside of integrands. Um, but now if we're taking an integral of a finite sum, we know that you can interchange integrals with finite sums. We don't know yet that you can integrate, inter interchange integrals with infinite sums. That's what we're doing in this exercise. But we do know that we can interchange integrals with finite sums. So if we have an integral of a finite sum, that's going to be the finite sum of the integral. So we still have this limit as n goes to infinity on the outside, but now we've got the sum from m equals 0 to n of the integral of g m d mu. Okay, and so then this is precisely the sum from m equals 0 to infinity the integral of g m d mu, and we're done. So you do have to be a little bit careful because it seems like this should be a very, like th th this seems like it should be a very easy problem you just apply monotone convergence, but you do have to be a little careful in how you do this or else you might interchange an integral and a sum when you think it should be obvious, but it isn't. And you can only, we only know, we know that you're only able to do it for finite sums. And so we have to construct the scenario in which we do have an integral of a finite sum. And only then are we able to interchange it. And then we sort of do all the limit stuff around that and are able to get everything to work. Um, so yeah, that's all we need to do. And so we're done with the exercise.